We're just along for the Hey, everybody. Ride. Thank you for tuning in to the Stuff I Heard podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Peak, and we have a special podcast today. I have two guests. Uh, one of them says he's going to be silent, but I sincerely doubt it and hope he's lying to me. Um, we have, <laughs> we, uh, I am your host, Joshua Peak. Like I said, uh, we have Robert. How do you Le, pronounce your last name? It's La Hoop. La Hoop. It's like a hula hoop without the who. Oh, okay. It's a French hoop. I like a, I like a French hoop. It's more like a French horn, but more of a hoopy. Um, and we also have Danny McWilliams. Say hi, Daniel. Hi. See, I did it. Ah, I got him on that. Yeah. He kept saying, I'm not going to do this. I'm like, you're going to be part of it. I love you. I'll we both love you. Can. Yeah, there's a special kind of bond. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, we got you in here for a special thing. I wanted to talk about that for a second. You have your bullets and band-aids. You want to speak more about that? I, yeah, I'd love to, actually. Um, I'm just going to rip the band-aid off. How about that? <laughs> That's <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. So um, basically, we are a, a veteran-centric art therapy organization. Uh, who wants to shine a light on the breadth and depth of the human condition through veteran experiences. Okay. So, yeah. So it's, it's, uh, is it donation based? Is it online? Is it uh, so, physical? Well, um, it is donation based. Um, so basically what we do is we create a, uh, we, a traveling art project. We find several different cities and we get uh, local veterans from those cities as well as uh, local civilian writers and local civilian artists. And we, uh, uh, we have the writers, excuse me, we have the veterans tell a story, the writers write it, and then the artists do something based off of it uh, to reinforce that all of us are sharing a common human journey and that we can empathize with one another. And then from there, we collect all of these different stories and works of art. We put them into a book and we travel to these different cities to reinforce both on a micro and macro scale that we're all in this together and that there's both uh, support as well as responsibility uh, uh, in regard to acknowledging that. That's cool. I, um, how did you get started with this? I mean, cause I, I, obviously you were in the Marine Corps. We talked about that earlier mm -hmm. um, from, you said 2000 to 2004. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, was there something that inspired you to say, this is what I want to do when I get out? Or is this something that sort of happened as a byproduct of something? Well, um, it was a byproduct initially. Uh, once I got out, uh, you know, I'd always been a writer. So I was just, you know, writing whenever I had the chance. And then uh, eventually I started, uh, uh, you know, b working with other artists uh, and creating art shows based around the stuff that I was writing, or I was invited to write stuff for other art shows. And then eventually I, uh, I joined the uh, Pienza Art Company and uh, uh, from there, we would put on different art shows where we would raise money for charities. And so uh, one of the ones we did in 2012 was Bullets and Band-Aids, where we got you know, local veterans to tell a story, local writers to write it, and local artists to do something based off it. And uh, uh, we did that to raise money for one organization. And then uh, in 2016, we did it again um, by, I mean, like I spearheaded it but uh yeah so we we uh our second iteration was in 2016 and uh that's when we started traveling so we went from uh, uh like spartanburg and greenville to columbia mm -hmm. and uh this next iteration is going to be four different cities so it's going to be the spartanburg greenville area uh columbia charlotte and Asheville. oh cool um and uh i think one of, one of the cool things being um Oh, shoot. I guess I should mention, too, that like at one point I, I wrote a, a graphic novel memoir. Um, so my brother used to work for Marvel. And so we've both like basically been doing comic book stuff, you know, since we were kids. And uh, I was inspired to write this and uh, it got a lot of, uh, <laughs> well, it's it's a massive book and I had to you know, edit it and edit it and edit it yeah. and edit it. And then uh, uh, eventually Frank Miller's editor uh, checked it out. And, and so she edited it and then nothing happened. But that doesn't matter. The point being that I had exercised demons yeah. in doing this. And uh, I, I realized the impact that that had, which is why the first Bullets and Band-Aids started. And so now we're actually... Uh, uh, it's it's wild. Uh, uh, it's it's been blowing up relatively in the last few months uh, because COVID uh, happened. We weren't originally we weren't able to do anything outside of 
a, a, a regional area, right? Mm -hmm. So we were focusing on South Carolina initially. Uh, we did have a chief watermark where we wanted to have two people from opposite ends of the same conflict be in one show. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, you know, we were planning on doing that, you know, five, 10 years down the line because we would need to be able to transmit these different uh, uh, pieces of artwork to the different places. Um, but because of COVID, you know, that traveling art show just wasn't in the cards. Yeah. A lot of that social gathering stuff was cut down. Yeah. And that Everything was like, became either online or canceled or delayed or whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. We were entirely crippled by yeah. it. Um, you know, cause we were, you know, fundraisers were gone, like all of these different things. And I just kept plugging away because it's COVID like what else is I going to be doing? Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I, 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 see the value in being able to tell your story and be able to relate it to other people yeah because it'll it'll you know by letting go and recognizing that there's support you can tamp down on things like suicidal ideation drug abuse uh, uh sexual assault uh um you know domestic, domestic violence, violence yeah. yeah so like uh um once COVID hit uh and we weren't able to travel anymore i went ahead and and uh uh you know, pull the trigger on doing international things. Mm -hmm. So we now have two people from Argentina, one person from Liberia, one person from Zimbabwe, uh, two people from Pakistan. No, no, excuse me. No, two people from Palestine, one person from Israel, one person from Syria. Yeah, so we are, uh, you know, kicking it off pretty strong now. Yeah, I mean, I've always been talking about mental health awareness and stuff like that, with, especially with suicide rates being so high with veterans. Um, I have several friends of mine that, you know, came home and had the survivor's remorse mm -hmm. because why, why did I survive when my buddy didn't? And, you know, it, it, that is all consuming for a lot of guys who feel guilty the fact that they made it home to their families when their buddy didn't. And, you know, there's something crazy like, what was it, 22 suicides? Per but that's supposed to be the, crazy. Like well, that? it's it's per day, per day, but per day. Uh, yeah. yeah, but it's uh, uh, I mean, if you keep in mind, like after COVID, suicide rates skyrocketed yeah. during COVID anyway. But uh, but yeah, it's it's a uh, well, and a lot of it, I think, a lot of it comes from the fact that you know, as men, we were told that it's weak to admit that you have any faults or any flaws or any shortcomings or anything that you feel insecure about. You were mocked and made fun of and thought less than, and you know, in the last, I guess, couple of years, it's been normalized for people to say, yes, I'm, I'm seeking help for my depression. I'm seeking help for my drug addiction. I'm seeking help for my drinking problem. I'm seeking help for my domestic abuse situation. I'm, I, I had this happen to me when I was a child. And because of that, this is why I'm seeking help now, because I'm looking to better myself or seek, you know, to, to, to not commit suicide, to help my family out, to be a part of my community or give back in some way. And, and for a lot of veterans, right. I mean, that's a big thing. Like you were talking about, you, you found it as a cathartic way to kind of move through some things that you were going through and some things that you saw. And a lot of veterans need that. They need to know that that's an outsource and, and a possibility and, and a way for them to, to channel some of that and, and use it for good. I mean, mm. you, you were in a unique position to use that and then help other people out because of it. And, and maybe some veterans are out there that might listen to this or see this and go, Hey, I know that guy or <laughs> hear about bullets and band-aids and be like, Oh, like I, I got some things that I've been working on that I wouldn't mind submitting as well. Absolutely. I we mean, would love that. We had, there's a submissions page on our website. So if anybody's is it, interested, what is the website? Uh, it's uh bullets and band .org. Okay. And, uh, it, there's, uh, you know, there's a, a landing page and, uh, you know, a homepage and, the uh, the breakdown of of a lot of you know like what who it is that we've helped previously and mm -hmm. and uh, there's actually the last two shows that we did are on the the blog page so if you wanted to go through and check out the stories or the other you know pieces of artwork or how we put together the booklet or something like that um, that's uh, that's on there as well uh, you know we've also the the things that we've covered uh, you know private up to two star general. Um, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, Persian Gulf, Syria, Sierra Leone, Guantanamo Bay, um, like a, a lot of different uh, uh, media, like when it comes to artwork, mm -hmm. um, because we're trying to um, 
we're, we are trying to, to again, shine, the, shine a light on the human condition one way or another. And the depth and breadth of that is anything possible more or less, um, but we're trying to have it so that uh, like those people that are involved uh, are respected and, and are, are able to share a dignity within one another to reinforce not only their value, but the value of, of, of being a part of something larger. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure a lot of them come home thinking, all right, what am I supposed to do now? Like, you know, the Hurt Locker effect. Mm. I've been living this tragedy of a life that now seems normal and I come into what most people see as normal. And that's to me, the tragedy, or that's the hardest part of all of this is the repetition of like normal life, standing in line at a store <laughs> or hearing someone complain about the way their food tastes. And it's like, mm. if this is the thing that bothers you. <laughs> you know, th there is that element as well. And, and there are a lot of support groups out there, you know, for people to kind of reach out and talk to one another. And I encourage anybody that's out there listening like if you're going through something like that, definitely look for open sources like that. You can find them anywhere on Facebook or, you know, anywhere you look online for, you know, some kind of commonality. But if you can't find that, you know, you can go through an organization like yours and say, Hey, I'm, I'm also looking for information. Um, that's the thing is like a lot of people, again, they don't feel like it's okay for them to say, I need to talk to somebody. Mm. But if they know that there's veterans that are also going through this, they can reach out to them and say, is there anyone I can speak to? And I'm sure that any, any one of our brothers and sisters out there would be happy to help them find the resources they need, but also the families of those people. Like if there's any families that are going through this as well, loss of loved ones and stuff like that. I mean, absolutely. We've, we've, uh, that's the thing is that you, we don't, we want a, a, a story that, that involves veterans. We want to, to, uh, uh because of the hyperbolic nature of their stories, mm -hmm. but, uh, we've had people donate stories before, you know, in the, uh, a poem that their brother wrote before they committed suicide or, uh, you know, on the, this upcoming show, we have somebody that uh, won the Medal of Honor in Vietnam because they jumped on a grenade, but his sister is the one that's going to have to put in that story. Um, you know, if, uh, uh, if you have been affected by veterans, um, you know, whether it be a family member or a friend of yours, one way or another, like objectively, you saw these changes. Like it really is about uh, a, a celebrating a common humanity, mm -hmm. one way or another. Yeah. And I think this is also kind of interesting. Today is the, the you know, anniversary of D Day. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming out. So yeah, kind of kind of poignant that that all comes around full circle. Yeah. Uh, I got a friend of mine who's uh, from the Czech Republic, and he said that his his town was liberated by you know u.s soldiers coming in there and and freeing them and he said that was that was you know ever changed their environment um he uh he it, you know he grew up in, a, in an environment where they were under russian rule and yet they kind of knew it was not right and now he lives here and i said that's got to be a strange duality of life and yet you know we see a lot of patriots that they get out and they go i just can't go back home Mm -hmm. So they find life in other countries because it's like, I just need some sense of other world to feel normal. And, you know, luckily organizations online, you can reach globally. You mm -hmm. can communicate globally. You can be part of this community. So even if somebody's listening to this in Sri Lanka or Canada or Russia, they can be <laughs> like, Hey, I've got a story to tell. There is part of my history that I want to tell or part of someone I know's history I want to tell or a way that I can artistically show them something, you know, if it, whether it's like you're talking about all mediums, if there's a painting or a model or some kind of creation they have, maybe a graphic novel that they want to share. Hmm. It's not their opportunity for them to get their, their voice out there. So Absolutely. That's Absolutely. important. I, I dig that. That's really cool. Well, I think, I, th I think a, a, another thing being, and if you'll excuse me, like a, um, just the idea of, of, not telling your story of, of, of defining yourself by that pain. Mm -hmm. um, like some people don't realize it takes courage to admit that, yeah. to, to show this pain and by doing so kind of letting go of the life raft. Yeah. Um, and, but, but by doing so you do realize that people are supporting you if you allow them to. Um, so, you know, with the appropriate eyes, that's an act of, of courage and prevents you from literally uh, uh, doing negative things to those that you love and fought for. Yeah. Well, it's that, that mentality of, you know, if you see someone who's lashing out over something, it's usually because they're suffering and they don't have the 
the ability or resources to physically say what's going on or, or share what's going on. Uh, maybe they haven't developed enough mentally to go through it or psychologically enough to, to find the tools they need to work it out. Hmm. So they're lashing out. And, you know, anytime I see that in public, um, at work, I'm a trainer and I come into contact with lots of people and, and there's flaws in personality in all of us. Uh, but there are moments of reactionary time where I go, okay, so what is that about? Like, it's, it's not just about this event. There's something else is here. Hmm. And so I have to kind of feel that out. And, you know, a lot of us are guilty of that. We all have, you know, demons that we fought as, as we were children or things that we've gone through as adolescents or adults. And a lot of people are uncomfortable about talking about it. I mean, not long ago, there was a huge Me Too movement where suddenly the world's eyes were un unveiled of, to all the things that were going on with our wives and sisters and girlfriends mm -hmm. and mothers. And it's like, whoa, here's the thing no one wanted to talk about. Okay, well, so we also had that opportunity and responsibility as veterans and as men, just not, not even as veterans alone, but, but as men to say, hey, like, we're all going through something. Let's share in our experience. Let's grow from it. Let's help each other out everywhere that we can, you know. Yeah, yeah. And that's cool. I, I totally dig your, your idea there and oh, sure, your sure. organization did now, were you the only founder? You have other guys that, that were founders with you of, of this bullets and band-aids? Well, uh, I was part of the PNC art company. Uh, the first time we, we did this, um, um, I am, I am the founder. I'm the one that came up with it and put it together on the rest of it. But, uh, but I think it's important to recognize that like this entire thing is a lattice, mm -hmm. you know? So, so I, you know, I, I, supplied a, a platform and a direction but it is inherently reliant upon other people to uh to show up and and uh, uh be a participant you know so yes i'm i'm you know i'm i'm the founder but you know if uh the way that it's set up is you know if i were to drop dead tomorrow somebody could just walk right in take my place and and keep it going now when people submit artwork like you're talking about the they could go on the website and they could submit artwork for this is it uh, set up for like an auctionary type thing or is it more of a community sharing type thing or, or how is that done? So at the, uh, at the end of the uh, traveling art project, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have uh, uh, a week after the last show ends, we have uh, an auction. Okay. So the artists get 40% of the, uh, the, of the bid for the auction work. Um, the, uh, the writers, you know, we're going to be, uh, uh, putting our stuff into the Library of Congress so they'll be published. Um, the veterans get a high resolution print on canvas of one of their selected pieces from the show. Uh, we also uh, uh, partner up with other local nonprofits in those cities to help mm -hmm. smooth their transition. And uh, uh, yeah, so I, on the submissions page, um, you don't have to submit actual artworks immediately. You can just show us your your Instagram or something like that. And and your interest and, and ways of getting in touch with you. And, uh, uh, and then we can just, you know, go from there. It's the same thing with uh, uh, writing. If you want to submit some of your writing work. Uh, and of course, we are constantly looking for veterans, writers and artists at any given point in time, just because this is a rolling show. And then uh, as we grow, we are going to want uh, uh, access to uh you know we we can continually support these people and have them support us at the same time as we uh expand yeah well and also you know just right off the bat what comes to mind is uh reading something recently on netflix uh it said that they're running out of content so they're coming up with <laughs> reusing shows that were you know popular as they were young and also you know one of the big moves in hollywood right now is to do everything is like marvel and you know, comic book type stuff mm. you know dc's blowing up right now and they're looking constantly at what's the next thing that we can do. And the draw is the good story. Hmm. And so who doesn't love a good you know, story from a veteran of this is some things that we went through, some amazing you know, conflict and, and all of the elements that you want, man versus man, man versus nature, man versus each other, you know, the, and, and or himself yeah. or himself, you know, and, and suddenly, you know, you've got a story or a, you know, something worthwhile that Hollywood may go, Hey, let's throw some money at this and put it on the screen so other people can share in this experience. And it becomes cathartic in a lot of ways for people, but also profitable for the people who come up with it. So you never know where inspiration is going to come from. You know, I'm sure years ago when they were making comic books, no one thought we're going to make a lot of money this one day. <laughs> they just had a story they felt compelled to tell. Mm -hmm. And sometimes young artists feel that their stories will never get out there and no one will ever care. 
And if you have a good story and you can vet it the right way, uh, enough eyeballs on it, who knows? Somebody may say, hey, this is a really great idea. Let's, let's think this out. Let's, let's source it more. Let's get more content from this. Because, I mean, ideas are actually pretty hard to come by for some people. Hmm. And, you know, there is this weird idea that maybe ideas are aliens. That's amazing. <laughs> so real quick, um, I like we've been friends for years. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I know a, a decent amount about the behind the scenes of what's going on with oh, yeah, totally. Band-Aids, but it's still like the biggest question I've always have is how in the hell do you get money for this, right? Like <laughs> how do you support this? Because this is a beautiful idea and it's something I'm insanely passionate about. The problem is, is that doesn't put food on the table or pay yeah. rent checks. <laughs> yeah. So for anybody listening who's curious, how how does that happen? All right. So let, let me start by saying, God bless you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I knew you weren't gonna ask, you weren't gonna bring it up. Yeah. I, I didn't want to touch it because I was like, I don't know how much we questions actually ask about this. I'm a fool in a china <laughs> shop with this stuff. Let's I'll, get it. Oh, bless you for it. Actually, give uh, this man your money. I'm so, I'm, I'm very <laughs> I'm very we, glad if, that if you we edit right here is because he said something he wasn't supposed to. So <laughs> this, what my, what minute are we at? <laughs> Twenty. Okay. <we're> good. <laughs> So um, it's 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 interesting. We do have all of these great stories. We do have all of these uh, uh, these people from all over the world. Uh, uh, but uh, right now <laughs> we are we are very much hurting uh, uh, for money because um, uh, we have people on the board, and those people are busting their tail, and God bless them for it. We're getting eyes on. We have a lot of interest but that isn't helping us write grants. <laughs> you know, we haven't been able to put on a fundraiser because of COVID. Um, so uh, I think the best way would be, you know, we are, we're on Amazon Smile. Uh, uh, we're on uh, you know, Facebook. If you want to do a Facebook fundraiser, of course, there's the direct donations that are on our website. Um, and we also have uh, limited edition shirts. Uh, um, so every month we have a different design uh, from from different designers that I'm and I'm just entirely thrilled with the the stuff that's come out so far, um, and so yeah, half half of the uh, um, half of the the net sales for that go to the artist because or the designer I should say because one of the things that I wanted to make sure of was to be able to create something where if you touch it, you benefit from it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, every single person, you know, needs to. Uh, 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 realize that they are appreciated and we want to make sure that we retain, you know, a, a certain standard of quality and, and dignity and the rest. Um, so we're trying to be as, you know, efficient uh, uh, as possible so that we can, you know, perpetuate, have longevity and the rest. But uh, um, yeah, we, we, we are at a precipice right now where we in desperately need uh, uh, funding because the more funding we have, the less expensive it is for us to put together these different teams of veteran writer and artist. So, because so much of this is operational, um, so uh, uh, the more we get, the larger we ex we can expand exponentially yeah. and do that much more benefit for everyone. But uh, uh, but we yeah we need something in order to you know, make it through this next iteration, which is going to be in November. Yeah. So yeah, if they bless you for it, if there's <laughs> anybody out there that feels like donating, just know it would be tremendous uh, to have one team, like not worrying about operating costs, but to, but to have, uh, you know, a veteran, a writer and an artist all working in tandem, that is $250 mm -hmm. just to have, because we also have to, you know, print out the, the the canvas prints for the veterans and we have to print out the booklets and we have to do all these other things coordinate with all of these people so yes please like feel free to to, to donate your time your efforts if you're interested in uh, 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 volunteering um, email us at uh, contact at bullets and or Robert at bullets and .org for that matter if you want to speak to me specifically um, but yeah, yeah, we are we are on a, a wild precipice where we might be able to do some extraordinary things on a on a worldwide level, but we need uh, support as much as we want to point out support. Yeah, I mean, like that's the thing that's been absolutely blowing my mind with this is we're talking about it like 
you know, over the past few weeks as we've been getting ready for you to come visit us, um, is just how big this is getting. Yeah. Cause like, I remember the 2012 show. Sure. Like sure. I remember that and it was wonderful and it was beautiful. Um, I was in Florida at the time, so I wasn't able to be there for it, but mm. I remember like hyping it online and being super excited about it. And best. it was like this, this beautiful, small little thing. And now you're talking about being this like multinational organization <laughs> that like is about to just be able to have this beautiful impact because that's one thing I think a lot of people don't remember is like we can get so caught up with our veterans mm. that we tend to forget that there's there's veterans all over the world that yeah. are going through these same things and just from different perspectives and the beautiful thing of of being able to step out of your own perspective and see from somebody else's shoes mm. and see what they're looking at and that's why I'm like super excited <laughs> about what's happening. I'm well, bless you for it, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, Carl Jung said, as, as far as we can discern, the sole purpose of human existence is to kindle a light of meaning within the darkness of mere being, right? So, so if you're, uh, uh, the way that I view that is, is we are here to experience. Mm -hmm. And the best way for us to experience in general is, is through one another's stories, because we, it's not like, you know, like we have the money, all of us have the money to just be in Papua New Guinea, you know, in two days. We have to read about it, you know, mm -hmm. and same thing with like so many other places, so many other time periods and the rest. Uh, uh, so, yeah, hopefully this is going to, like, why would you not go yeah. out of your way, you know, given the one life that, that you have? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I used to tell my kids when they were young, I, I raised three boys and I told them, I said, you know, you have two choices in life. You can help one another or you can hurt one another and you have to choose. Like it's every, every moment is a chance for you to do something different. Mm -hmm. And, you know, was I heard in a podcast one time, uh, this guy was going through a breakdown and, and his buddy said, look on your table right there, you've got books by Ernest Hemingway. Like he's telling you about his adventures around the world and these crazy things that he lived through. Mm -hmm. And he's right there. He's right there on your table. <laughs> and when was the last time you opened the book and read it and like, like really experienced it or really got to thinking about it. And it makes you think about like other artists and the things they've gone through. And, you know, just this past week, I listened to Neil deGrasse Tyson with Joe Rogan talking about, you know, the, the Van Gogh, you know, was it the summer night? Uh, Starry painting? night. Starry Starry night. He said, he said, we know from his painting that the, the town is not real, but we know the placement of the moon and Venus in the paint in the painting. And we know what time of year it was because we can, we can follow that through astrology to figure out exactly he was in the South of France and this is where it was. And it's, there's not a town there, but it probably resembled a town that he was familiar with. And he's like, all of this come from that. And he goes, but, but it tells a story just from that artistic thing that he had you can follow along with it and you, you want to dive more into it. That actually like reinforces that, yeah. that we're all in this together. Yeah. The idea that, uh, uh, that you would put together a, a piece of artwork, especially if, if, you know, you're sacrificing your ego on the altar of the great mystery, sort of like, let's find out where our art takes us, sort of thing. If that is what you're attempting to do, uh, uh, then by the nature of it, if, if you are looking to express yourself to yourself mm -hmm. or to those that are close to you or to something broader, you know, the, the society or your country or the world, or again, the great mystery, what you're doing by the action of that is recognizing something that is greater than yourself, which means that if you're a guy that's, you know, if you're uh, a, a Roman drawing genitals on a rock before he goes off to war or, or, uh, Monet, all of these actions, it's, it's a prayer. Yeah. Like the, the action of creating artwork is a prayer and not just that, but one, as you had talked about earlier is literally, it literally transcends time and space yeah. because we can have conversations with people that died hundreds of years ago. If you're, if we, if you're looking at a piece of artwork, in fact, if you're looking at a piece of artwork and and you're thinking, oh, I could have done this instead of this, or why did they do that, or something like that. By by questioning uh, uh, what could have, like how it could have been, or any of the rest of that, you in fact are also becoming an artist, just by the nature of questioning and viewing it. Well, and it becomes a shared experience, which again is that part of that tapestry that you talk about. You know, yeah. there's a friend of mine in the Marine Corps that I remember became a paratrooper, and he told me that every time he would jump, he had a uh, welcome mat in his bag 
because he said when I hit the ground, I'm putting that on the ground so they know that I'm welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, God, uh, if like cell phones weren't a thing then, but if he could have taken some pictures of that, that was art in itself. I was I always think about him. And Peters, if you're out there, I love you, boat. <laughs> 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 you're crazy. I love you. But uh, but yeah, he he bought that stupid welcome mat when we were in like uh, MCT training and like we had to dig foxholes and stuff, and he sat it out on the outside, and they come up. With, why is this? And he goes, I just want them to know they can walk right up here. <laughs> he goes, I got, I got something for them, but they can walk right up here. He said, you walk up here. Look here. <laughs> I was like, man, what kind of brain thinks that way? But I love it. I love that kind of mentality. Brains go weird in fighting holes. <laughs> yeah, But it's also, you know, again, it's that idea of what, what if ideas were aliens? I mean, that's the kind of what if, what if certain people are just receptors? What if Van Gogh is just an incredible receptor of an idea? Well, are you familiar with the idea of, all right, so we live in four dimensions, yeah? yeah. Up, down, left, right, forward, back. Uh, and then and time, of course, being the fourth one. Um, uh, uh, there was a, uh, if you could imagine uh, so people living in three dimensions, mm -hmm. right? Uh, um, we'll say up, down, left, right, and then time. Mm -hmm. uh, if we were to pass through those dimensions, all they would see was a sliver, like that, that slice of us passing through that dimension. And apparently, according to uh, the grand unifying theory in regard to uh, 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 not resigning, in regard to uh, uh, acknowledging physics, there's 12 uh, uh, dimensions. Known. No, known dimensions. Excuse, yeah, abso yeah, absolutely. 12 known dimensions in regard to uh, uh, reconciling yeah. uh, physics. And that's just as far as we know. Well, and, <laughs> you know? and Neil deGrasse's last visit with Rogan, he talked about finding... They basically believe that there's an infinity of versions of the multiverse of things going on where sometimes physics don't necessarily follow the patterns they're supposed to. Mm. And that in some of them, there isn't a need for gravity. And some of them, there isn't a need for oxygen. And some of them, there isn't a need for a, a human body. And, you know, all the crazy ideas that you could think of, he goes, there's possibilities at all that is real mm. and that none of this is real. And that maybe this is a simulation. I actually, I, I find it difficult to wrap my head around the idea that there aren't infinite universes. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the idea yeah. that there would, they would be finite. Well, it's strange. Just last me, time right? he was talking about how, you know, we're looking at, at galaxies and planets far away. And mm -hmm. he said, but we're studying them by our unit of measure, which is light to time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our closest one is 33 million light years away, which means that it's not even in existence anymore. And it's probably moving at an exponential speed away from us because of the ever expanding universe. And he goes, and the, the measure that we measure it by is growing at such a speed that we can't even perceive it. Mm. And the fact that we physically see it, it's not even there. Like it's further away all the time. And, and, you know, every time he starts talking about stuff like that, I feel like my brain just goes a little bit smaller and goes, you don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Stop listening to him. You're well, going, you're going to go crazy. <laughs> if, if you think of the effects uh, uh, that gravity has on photons alone, that mm -hmm. that's going to bastardize all kinds of ideas. Well, of, and the, of the gravity of the moon. I mean, he was talking about yeah, this last episode sure. of the moon. It does have an effect on your, your weight here on the earth. So does the sun. Mm -hmm. And if they work together, that I could also affect, you know, the, the fact that you get on a scale and you're a little bit thinner on one day, it has nothing to do with the fact that you've lost weight. It could just be the gravity is a little bit lighter. Mm. And, you know, the, he was like, we can actually measure every step of this. And he goes, there's no actual proof that, uh, that a full moon can cause people to be crazier. He said, it's just the fact that you maybe have more light. He said, and not only that, but they say that, you know, there's a lot more births on a full moon. He goes, but it's actually 295 days from conception that you're born. So maybe you were conceived on a full moon because it was a little more romantic. Sure. It's this oh, crazy absolutely. idea that suddenly is there, like there's no frou-frou thing that coordinates with the moon. It's, it just happens to be coincidence. Well, the idea of us being made of, of uh, X percentage of water and then how the moon does affect the tides might have, you know, it's very minimalistic. He's like, it's, it is so minuscule. It's, it's crazy. But it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, that that's one place that I, I struggle with it like discrediting this just idea because it's so minimal like mm. yeah so's the wrong gut bacteria so yeah you gut, know what i mean like a lot of times your you gut could bacteria literally is, introduce yeah an entirely infinitesimal amount of the wrong bacteria in the wrong place at your body and if you look at 
the proportion of your body to this bacteria. Oh, that's so small that you shouldn't even like you can have a paper cut on your finger and you get the wrong bacteria in there and really horrible things can happen. Yeah. So like, not to say like, it's true, but also discrediting it because of an intestinal possibility. Right. Infinitesimal words. I like, I like, like words. You did. You did. I'm great. not good you, at them. You do good words. <laughs> yeah. well, if you think about also like by by viewing uh, uh, a subject, you are in fact changing it. Like mm -hmm. in, in regard to experiments, you're not supposed to. Uh, uh, the yeah. photons themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So so just adding light to it affects it. Yeah. So the idea of and then you have like uh, Everett's interpretation of the Schrodinger's cat principle, which is basically like uh, uh, you have to view it in order for it to be uh, in existence. Yeah. So theoretically, all of us are reliant upon one another, as well as also changing one another at any given point in time, just by acknowledging and viewing it. And that just makes me think of weeping angels. <laughs> that doesn't make me comfortable. <laughs> Have you ever watched Doctor Who? Yeah. Yeah. But I always go back to the idea that maybe ideas are aliens. Yeah. I mean, we perceive idea, uh, supposedly aliens as being humanoid or some kind of monster. And there is a coordination of people thinking that we view them as monsters because that's how a reflection of how we would react if we were aliens to someone else. Mm. And, you know, with recent, you know, UFO sightings that are being reported all over the place, I found out that was kind of a weird conclusion of Donald Trump passing some kind of COVID law. He wrote that in as a last minute thing of saying six months after I get out, they have to release all of the information that, that they have on, hmm. on UFOs, not saying aliens. It just says UFOs. So they have to, as part of this COVID relief fund thing that they're doing, they have to now say, yes, we've been tracking UFOs and here's some information we have. And here's all of the information, sort of a weird little backdoor thing that he did, but it kind of is pretty cool. Um, but I like mean, I have that, I've had the mentality all along that, that it's not, it's not anything visiting us more than it could be just drones. Cause like, if we were going to go visit someplace like Mars, mm -hmm. we're not sending people there right now. We're sending drones. We got a helicopter on Mars right now. It's like, hey, let's take pictures. <laughs> but also, like, if you were able to 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 study anything, and you had the technology advanced enough, part of you would think, I don't really want to disturb this too much. But can I study it? Mm. So how would you study it? So maybe you start off with drones. Maybe you start off and you look at the planet as a whole and go, okay, it's mostly water. Let's check out the water first. We live on this planet. And we don't know enough about the water. We know more about our stars than we do the water. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. You know. And how much but, do we know about Antarctica as well? Like there's, yeah. It's... I'm told it's that way. I don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I mean, it's, it, it does, it, every step of it makes you think, okay, I, I haven't learned enough. Let me learn more. Mm. Like there's always something else to learn. And, you know, again, Neil deGrasse said, you know, a lot of people want to adopt the Alice Cooper schools out for the summer, schools out forever. He's like, I got out of school and I just wanted to learn more. And mm. I and I thought to myself, yeah, but I was of the I was of the Alice Cooper mentality of I'm done. I don't have to do this anymore huh. until I got out of the Marine Corps. When I got out of the Marine Corps, I thought, yeah, what's my purpose? Like here's that moment of we of calm where you go, I've done this incredible thing and I'm out now. And, and as a dad, I'm, you know, taking care of the kids and whatnot, but there's moments where you're, it's quiet and you're like, what am I supposed to be doing? Mm. Like suddenly the restlessness starts to build up and, and, and ideas start to pop up. And I, and I start thinking to myself, oh, before I went in the Marine Corps, I used to write short stories and poetry and mm. stuff like that. And then the internet was created and I was like, well, maybe I can write some stuff on there. Mm. And my wife happened to read some of it. And then we dated and then we got married and here we are 20 something years later. Um, nice. But along the way, ideas just start generating with each other. And the more you start sharing ideas, the more you start making a community. Like you mm -hmm. were talking about, you build a tapestry of a community and you share in your ideas and you start going, Hey, I have this thing I've been thinking about. I want to share it with you and get what you think. I call Danny sometimes with something crazy. I'm like, Danny, I've been studying this. And he's like, wait, 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 slow down. I got an idea. And he's like, We'll just, we'll start pinging off of each other with ideas. And, and two hours later, he'll, <laughs> he called me one day and he's like, come over. We need to do stuff. And I'm like, okay, you mean bring your thing is now nope, just come over. Nice. And we spent the whole day just doing stuff mm -hmm. and it just come up with more and more stuff. I mean, it just, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's a vibration. I don't know if it's a, if it's aliens, I don't, I don't know. Maybe we're just good receptors of, of, of each other, of things that we want to do. And it's like, why not take the inspiration and run with it? Yeah, but absolutely. there needs to me, there needs to be yeah. more of that. But now 
with that being said, like there are some people that they, some people are creators and some people are, are consumers. Mm. And I've always said that it's very hard to do both. Like you either create and you're one of those crazy people that just creates all the time or you're a consumer and all you do is sit and consume or, you know, just, you're, you're just partaking in everything that's coming at you, mm. you know, avid readers, avid watchers of TV, avid, you know, event, you know, people that go to you know concerts and stuff, they're consuming the stuff, but they're not, maybe not creating it. It's mm. very difficult to kind of skate that line between it. And that's actually what I've been trying to do this whole time. I don't, I didn't really realize it, but that's what the podcast is based on the stuff mm. I heard. I'm literally consuming as much as I can and trying to share it with an audience and saying, Hey, why don't more people look at this stuff? Here's some avenues. Here's some things you could share. Maybe I'm like a tour guide. Maybe I'm, you know, Just a weird, the exits are here, 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 weird, here, here, crazy here. tour guide. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it sounds like you're, you've got a pretty decent balance of both, I'm, well, it's, you know, like as much creative, as much creative stuff yeah. as I've seen walking through your house yeah well <laughs> you know yeah. like as much as you like I, I i recognize that you know you, you are digesting a lot of different things from a lot of different directions which is fantastic especially with the metaphors uh involved with fantasy and science fiction yeah yeah but then also you know you're, you're... an appreciation for the the lore which is star wars and boba fett oh yeah absolutely <laughs> well the canon yeah the canon. one way or another the, yeah, yeah the interesting web it weaves of an idea that there's something greater but yet we all share yeah oh totally there are and then it doesn't have to it doesn't have to have uh anything to do with any of your specific identifiers necessarily there are there are arch heroes yeah. that we have in our own lives that reflect some of the characters that we see in the show there is moments of magic that we see in people that we go, how did you do that? And mm. you go, they wink at you and it's like, it's the force you know? <laughs> or something yeah, like yeah. that. And you're like, this is so inspiring to a lot of people because, you know, we do live in an age where we're, there's a lot of stuff from the media to discourage people to say, you don't matter. Your, your opinions are wrong. You're, you're going, to you are path. just a consumer. You're just a consumer. Mm. And I hope that the pushback of that is a lot of people going, no, I'm not. I'm a creator and this is this is what I feel passionately about. And there's a lot of people doing some really creative things and thankfully you know through YouTube and through podcasts and through shared experiences with people in their community they're doing that, mm -hmm. but it really takes community to do that. It's very hard for one person to plot their own course. And it's much easier if we all work together. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, that's that's uh, that's another. You were talking earlier about uh, dichotomies, like the difference between being the master of your own destiny and uh, gone with the flow. <laughs> you yeah. gotta pick and choose, like what well, what moments to do this. You know, I've always tried to take the paradigm of Joe Rogan's empire that he's built as mm -hmm. a media podcaster, comedian, but also he sort of turned into the guy's version of Oprah Winfrey. He's hmm. you know got. I don't know anybody else talking to scientists for a three hour platform on a regular basis saying, Hey, tell me about the really cool thing that you've learned, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And yeah. the only difference between him and the average person is the engine agency. Yeah. Agency. Yeah. Right. So if I, I literally sat on the couch with my wife and I said, what if I did this on a small scale? And she was like, what? I said, I think I can build something from nothing. And she was like, <laughs> Okay. I said, you know, that room back there that you're using for a workout room, I'm going to make that a podcast room. She goes, no, you're not. Here we are guys. <laughs> <laughs> this nice. used to be a workout room. Nice. Welcome to the podcast. Right. I've actually had her doing podcasts on here. She has her own version of this called stuff she heard. And it's her and her girlfriends talking about their goals and <laughs> dreams and aspirations. That's and it's, fantastic. It, yeah. it is a shared experience. It is the idea of the fact that none of us are in this alone mm. and we all have a voice. We all have a, a sense of community and a responsibility to one another to share in those experiences. Cause that's what makes us better. Mm. You know, through community, we can all be better. And you know, your bullets for band-aid bullets and band-aids thing is, is a wonderful idea. I love the idea. I like, I love the fact that it's been going on for so long. I didn't realize 2012 was, was is that the first event or is that? Yeah. The 2012 was the first one. The second one was 2016. Okay. You know, the third one is coming up because we only became a nonprofit uh, two years ago, technically six months of that was just making sure that all of our ducks were in, in a, you know, in a row and, and, uh, uh, and then after that COVID hit, like, a, like we were making serious strides and then COVID hit and we just took a nosedive for an extended period of time. I mean, there's a lot of veterans out there. You know, one of the comforting things that I, I tell my wife all the time, mm. if we're in a busy city on vacation or something, veterans are more with their head on a swivel. They're more looking at people, sizing them up, going, 
who do I got to look out for? Who can I recognize? Who's got my back if things are crazy? Because mm-hmm. if something goes crazy and immediate, you see veterans stand up and go, what's going on? Yeah. Like, do I need to step in? That's the immediate reaction of all of us. And there's so many veterans in, the, in this country. You know, that's one of the biggest things that a lot of people forget about whenever you hear the media or politicians talk about, we're going to come in here. We're going to, we just need to get rid of these guns. We need to, <laughs> hold on, time out. <laughs> <laughs> you don't realize who you're talking to. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I do, I do want to just uh, go ahead and, and make sure that everyone knows that when I, when we say veterans, we're not talking about just war veterans, right? Just like veterans in general. I just figured I'd, I'd make sure that that was clear because yeah. a lot of the time people are like, okay, so you're a veteran-centric art therapy organization. You get war veterans to paint. And it's like, no, that's not. Everybody. Yeah, it's, it involves everyone like working together. And so there's no, uh, yeah, yeah. You don't have to have gone to war uh, uh, to, to be a part of it. Yeah. Or part of this country. As Danny was pointing out, people from all over the globe are going through something extremely yeah. you know, tumultuous and, and they have to share their stories as part of their therapy that's going to help people around them get through this. Yeah. I mean, imagine like going to therapy and, and then just like having some of that on paper, just a little bit of it, not much, five minutes worth of that therapy session on paper. Mm-hmm. And you can help so many other people. Right. If you think about the amount that it costs for uh, for us to get the veterans to tell their stories and then have artists write them and all the rest of that, if uh, uh, like the amount of benefit that had happened to me when I wrote my graphic novel memoir, if if I could have just like spent that money instead, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like drop a little bit of scratch and just everything be cool. Yeah. You know, I would have absolutely done that. And we can in, in fact do this on a, a grand scale. Um, you were talking earlier about uh, 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 creativity and, uh, uh, you know, people either being consumers or creators. Um, the, uh, the Renaissance wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the plague. Right. So I think uh, like Corona, if, if nothing else, is, is kind of like put some yeah. coals to the feet of people. To get Which goes back done. into Van Neistat's thing of the, yeah. of the 80 year trend or the yeah, 100 year trend. Turning. Yeah, the fourth turning every 20 I years. I show you that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. So everybody check yeah. out Van Nuysdale Days on young. YouTube. Days young. It's yeah. real good. <laughs> it's based on a book, but it, but he graphed it out on, on paper that rolled down from the ceiling and showed the 20-year trend and how the people going through this right now mm-hmm. are basically going to be the people who save us through the next phase of the next, de- de- of the next not, it's not decade, what's a 20-year period? Uh, I don't. I don't a know. Turning, the next 20-year turning, turning is what he yes. calls them. Or the book they're, they're going to be the ones that that pull us through this, and they're the ones that are going to be creative, and they're going to the ones that they're going to think outside of the box. And you know, there's elements of that in every struggle in life. Uh, when you're stifled with your ability to to live your life as normal, you then think outside the box. You know, I always say that the reason that grunge music happened in the '90s was because of the AIDS epidemic. Hmm. You know, on one hand, you got a lot of people dying; on the other hand, you got some really cool music hmm. coming out of Seattle. Hmm. <laughs> a lot of plaid, but. Every no struggle shit. that you go through yeah. comes with something great. Vietnam, you have incredible rock and roll music coming out, also with the advent of a lot of well, drugs. Look at the punk scene. Punk like, scene. Punk sure. music, hardcore, metal, all of that came out of Cold struggle. War. Yeah, out well, rap, rap did as well. Yeah. Rap did yeah. blues. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Like the music that drives our souls. Mm. And right now we have Carly B. <laughs> Look. Okay, so right now is not a good example. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can hush on that point because there is some amazing music coming yeah, out. Yeah, there right is. Now. There yeah. is. There's amazing. I like. I don't even care. I've been on Spotify. I put on teen hits on Spotify all the time right now. Teen hits. Yeah, you can find like there's this big curated teen hits playlist, and it's all the music that Zoomers are listening to right now. And like a lot of it's not like it's a lot of it's I just really good. Him, like cleaning the house and roller skates now uh, i don't know why <laughs> sweetie i don't know if you know me or not. i just uh, imagined a mcdonald's uh, uh was a happy meal i don't know why it right just popped into my head but there's so much really <laughs> amazing music coming out right now and the thing is is it's it's almost harder to stay on the edge of music now yeah like mm-hmm. it's easier and it's harder. It's easier because the you have that, the internet. Yeah, I love the fact that the internet now is giving a voice to anybody who can download even mm-hmm. like SoundCloud or TikTok. Like a lot Apple of people music. are blowing up on TikTok, right? You now. can you can post your stuff straight mm-hmm. to Apple Music. You're like, hey, here's my song. You Ooh. can record and edit a solid track with your cell phone now. Yeah. And that's awesome. 
but the thing is, is it's almost harder to get into new music mm -hmm. because we've all got streaming services. So we can all just listen to the same music we've been listening to for the last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, however long it is. I'm still I doing find that. myself doing that all the time, going back to the albums that I'm comfortable with, that I love, that like hit that nostalgia for me. And that's why I hit that teen hits playlist and listen to everything from like rap to goth to K-pop and everything in between. And it makes me happy well, because music. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So for me, I always look up the singer songwriters list because I want to hear the, what they're creating. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it's just them and their guitar or them and a piano. Uh, and I'm like, holy crap, I can't believe this. And I'm like, who is this artist? Like I have to jot it down look yeah. up their music. I'm like, this is so good. Yeah. But I, I always want to check out the singer songwriters list. I don't know. Maybe that comes from my mom. My mom was kind of a hippie person for that kind of stuff. She was like, here's some cool music. I'm like, great. That's awesome. And I'd go to school and I'm like, what are you listening to? I'm like this. And they're like, that's so stupid. And I'm like, okay. You don't my, music, anything, my music sucks, I guess. It's a purist sort of thing. Thanks, maybe. Guys. Yeah. 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 I mean, I know a lot of people give Taylor Swift a lot of crap, but like I watched her thing on on Netflix where she came out with this recent thing of her writing music and she's obsessed with writing music. Like mm -hmm. she can't stop writing music. It is, I thought she was just at a certain point just singing other people's stuff, but I watched this thing and I went, oh no. Like she wakes up in the middle of the night and he's like, yeah, yeah. You know, and just go the recording studio. She'll wake people up at like two in the morning. Hey, can we get in the studio? Cause I got an idea. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I mean, Billie Eilish is the same way. Yeah. And and her stuff is phenomenal. Suzanne Santos is my thing right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, she'll get on, she'll just turn on her phone on, on Facebook Live and she's like, I kind of want to jam. And she'll just get the guitar and start wailing out. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you know, you were saying earlier, like, uh, uh, you know, they need to be given agency and opportunities yeah. sometimes. So there's plenty of people out there that are, that are incredibly talented or that or, or in, they have an incredible potential one way or another that uh, uh won't be found unless you actually yeah do something yeah i, I think uh, i think i had like a, a quarter life crisis at one point which is why i started writing in the first place <laughs> and i was like i want to like you know be known as a writer but in order to do that you got to write things <laughs> that is true yeah <laughs> right yeah my my youngest boy jacob he he wrote obsessively and i think he was in like a sophomore middle in high school or whatever. And uh, we were cleaning up his room and, and just found like five notebooks full of stuff he had written and was like kind of curious and just kind of going through the page. And it was like a, like Harry Potter meets Tolkien kind of story. I'm like, hmm. holy crap. You know, and this is my straight A student kid. This is the kid who's always quiet. This is the kid who's coming up with all this stuff. And I'm like, do something with this. Yeah, still like, waters. Right? He's like, yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm like, come on, man, do something with this. This is incredible. Yeah. This is really good. That's got to feel good. Yeah, but he's 24 now, and I don't know if he's ever done anything with it, but I'm like, you, you've got this juice. You've got whatever it is, spark of insanity, whatever you want to call it, run with it, baby. Do something. There's something so frustrating and beautiful about those people because I used to live with somebody that wrote like two to 3,000 words a day, mm -hmm. every single day. Mm -hmm literally will take it all to the grave with them mm. and i was like why aren't you you know i got curious i knew they were writing i was like why aren't you doing anything with this like what's going on and they were like oh i write for me like i i don't care about anybody else reading this i don't want recognition in fact i don't want other people reading this wasn't that i'm doing Emily this dickinson's thing too yeah I, yeah i believe so she wrote just tons and tons of stuff and never wanted anybody to read it and then when she died like suddenly they found it like holy crap yeah. this is so amazing yeah and like that mind blowing to me yeah, yeah. but the jacques Cousteau, i think said uh, uh if you are truly extraordinary at something you have no right to keep it from the world mm -hmm. that's good i like that yeah i love that i like that a lot yeah that makes, that makes i like sense. the fact that that uh that now what's the guy's name the avatar guy james cameron now has you know stupid money <laughs> and He's doing a lot of the wildlife stuff that's now on Disney Plus through National Geographic. And he said that he got to meet Jacques Cousteau. And he has, the, he said, I feel like I have a responsibility now because I've got crazy money and I have an interest. He said, when I was a kid, I wanted to be Jacques Cousteau. And now I can be. Yeah. He said, and if nothing else, I can at least throw money at the thing to show other people this amazing wildlife that we have under our ocean and, and around our planet that, that is going to get lost if we, don't, if we don't spark interest in it now. 
And taking some of that Jacques Cousteau mentality, he, he's like, the one thing Jacques needed more than anything was just more money to throw at it. And I've got that now. <clears throat> so James Cameron, <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> I'm not saying that that's exactly the way Bullets and Band-Aids is, but uh, we could really use your money. <laughs> so please, super duper, James, think about joining. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> If anyone knows James Cameron, uh, shoot him over, please. Uh, yeah. How yeah. does people call my people? Uh, yeah, we'll do lunch. <laughs> Love you, mean it. Uh, no, but seriously, I mean, it, you never know what platform is going to reach somebody. Mm. I mean, especially now with you know the access to celebrity that we have now mm. through Instagram and Twitter and whatever. I mean, you could write someone a message and then it gets handed off to the right person and suddenly you're standing face to face with them and they're like, hey, I want to help out your organization. I think it's a great idea. I think it's an opportunity. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, ABC, man, like we're, we're, we're trying to uh, uh, get this across to as many people as possible. We have, uh, uh, I, there was a guy, my, my old CEO, in fact, uh, uh, used to be the uh, commander for the Wounded Warrior Regiment. And uh, he was talking about uh, NFL players that he wanted to reach out to and, and the rest. So like fingers crossed on that but again like right now it's like we've got the coolest gun on the battlefield and no ammunition so yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so that's a, that's a very real thing there's a lot of um you know ifs and maybes and potentials the only thing i can guarantee is that we have the stories we're locking in the artists and this will happen one way or another so here's a crazy idea what if we linked J.J. Uh, Watt into this? Because he's now with the Arizona Cardinals and he's doing a lot for the Pat Tillman organization now. What if we somehow were able to reach him? I mean, that may, that may have some juice to it. Absolutely. I mean, I, we I could mean, try. Yeah, sure. That that's, that's doesn't say that it doesn't hurt. Yeah, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm entirely a fan of, uh, you know, if it's, if it's going to be a bear, it might as well be a grizzly. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That'd be, that I'm would be extraordinary. Crazy. I mean, you do, crazier things have you happened. Do crazy oh, yeah. things all Listen, the time. You know me. I'm like a freaking funnel. Sometimes yeah. I get I get like this, and I'm just going. I'm going after it. <laughs> oh man, like I've done crazy. Like Tyler Thrasher has two of the journals that I made because mm. uh, I sent him an email on a whim. I actually mm -hmm. reached out to Sebastian Younger. Do you know? Uh, he's a guy that wrote. Name. He wrote Tribe. Okay. Uh, okay. Put together Restrepo. Uh, yeah. uh, I reached out to him and uh, or through his uh, uh, publisher. Didn't hear back. So I like I reached out to him again and, and was just like, well, you know, if I don't hear back, it's no stress. I mean, you know how Marines are. I'll just be in touch again a little bit, you know. God, my brain is all, is just going into hyper mode of people now. Oh, nice, nice. Um, so yeah, so he eventually wrote back and said, uh, you know, it's a this is a great cause. It's right up my alley. Unfortunately, I'm not able to because I'm about to have a daughter and I'm about to have another book come out and all the rest of it. But uh, yeah, I think. Uh, uh, this has gotten some some pretty significant legs on it. We recently got a, 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 a an advisor to the last three presidents that's that's on our board. Cool. Yeah. That's um, excellent. <laughs> coolest gun on the on the battlefield. Now all we need is ammunition. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I heard it said long ago that that nothing happens if you don't put it out there in the universe. Right. You gotta you gotta say it to yourself first of all, mm. and then you gotta say it out loud to as many people as you can mm. because that's what brings the thing to light. So, you know, with that kind of mentality, I mean, here, here's a step. Yeah. It may yeah. be a small step, but it's a step. Yeah. And it may, this is a step. It this may lead you to fantastic. another step. As a matter of fact, like this is a cool step just because it's nice to meet you. Nice <laughs> you to meet know you what too. I mean? Like, absolutely. Yeah. I have a feeling that once these are gone, we're still going to be Listen, talking for a any, while. Anytime. Oh, yeah. Anytime you want to talk, man, I'll, I'll give you my number. We can communicate. Yeah, dude, bless you for it. You'll anytime, always have a place in Columbia if you want to hang Anytime out. you want to, you know, come on and, and promote anything, just let me know and we'll do it. Roger that. I'll, I'll travel. I mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's reciprocated. Like, uh, yeah, we'll yeah. figure something out. Absolutely. One way yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, I feel like we're at a weird place where we can, I feel like we can wrap pivot, it up. Sure. Wrap up. Yeah. Because we have other things we need to talk about. Yeah. yeah I really need to be. Oh, we did like an hour. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So anybody out there watching, uh, if you know anybody that can help spearhead this and, and ease it along and get it into the right hands so that we can make something happen, uh, reach out to Robert at uh, bullets and band aids dot org. And, uh, you know, we'll see what we can do to, to make this work for a lot of people, a lot of veterans out there that, that need help and, it may give them the creative outlet that we need and it may give us a better sense of community in the process. So 
do what you can and we'll do what we can. And hopefully this will all become something bigger and help people along the way. Bless so, you for it. Thank with you. that being said, uh, if you enjoyed this, please reach out to Robert, let him know, uh, or let me know and I'll pass it along. Uh, and remember to rate, review, subscribe, share this with your friends and I'll always end this by saying, cue the cow, something weird I came up with long ago. I don't know why. Cue the cow. Give me more likes. Give me